Hey, Ms. Angela Pasilico. Hello. Welcome to the thank, show. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, great introduction. I want to say hi to everybody. It's always uh, an honor and a pleasure to be with Fierce Entertainment. And before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to all our men and women that are in the military. Happy Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from a long yes. line of a military family, mm -hmm. including my husband. And uh, I also want to give a big shout out to my girl, Melina Amadova, who I know is watching. This oh, oh no. what happened? Oh, He's going to go live. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> and if okay. anybody wants to work out, it's a great salsa show. And the reason why I'm giving her a big shout out is because every week she has done this. Keep the spirits up of everybody because, you know, in South Florida, we really got hit with COVID-19. Yeah. So right. uh, she's a, a great person. She's performed at my pageant. Along and what with was her name again? Can you say her name again? Alina Amadova. Alina Amadova. Okay. So that's a good friend of yours you, you were saying? Yeah, she's a good friend of mine, and she also performs with Tito Puente Jr. And Tito Puente of, Jr. Yeah, and uh, they're right. both going to perform at the pageant when we're able to redo the pageant. We never do a show without them. And uh, Tito's father was also in World War II, so a big shout-out yeah. to my second dad, the great Tito Puente. Awesome. So a uh, funny story about that. My wife's uncle actually played Congo with uh, Tito Puente. The, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's more okay. from Puerto Rico. So, uh, Uncle played the Congos with uh, Tito Puente before. So, so we got to get that connection going. Yeah, so, definitely that connection going. So, Angela, welcome. You, um, so you are familiar, you know, like I said, it's like a whole family reunion. Um, right. so you, you know, besides being, you know, the uh, high end executive, the CEO of Miss International World and Miss, um, it, what is it, Miss Latina International? Miss Latina think, International. Yes. Okay, Miss Latina International. You're the CEO of, of uh, both of those companies. You work, you do a lot of stuff with uh, the cruise lines there in South Florida, which we're going to talk a little bit about. But um, you've also, you, you've been, you know, every time that we're doing one of our, our large Orlando International Fashion Week fashion shows, you're always the one that, you know, you, you're one of the hosts. You close it out with us. And right. um, so you, do you know, Anne, have you guys met before? You guys have done, you know, different shows because oh, Anne has, has hosted. Her. I've seen her yeah. around, like whether at pageants or at your shows, your events. So, yes, right. I have seen her. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I've seen right. Anne around too. So, you know, Pat. Pageant women, we pass one another somewhere along the line. Yes. yes. Okay. And and so Angela, you're always in in Tampa. You're doing things in Tampa as well. I mean, so yes, we're gonna make I that connection. Something. Yep. So, uh, back so, to, back in November, I did a big show there. 100 successful women in business. Okay. Wow. Well, oh, right. just wanted. Yes. So um, um, so I wanted to introduce you to, to Anne because she's a, one of the you. successful women over there in Tampa. Yes, so she um, and she's a good friend of ours. And um, but speaking of which, you know, we saw that little uh, that clip and we recognize Jenny Rosario, who was on our show last week. So yeah. um, tell us a little bit about Jenny. That was a good friend of ours that we met through you. Correct. Well, Jenny was uh, the first Miss Latina International going back in uh, 2003, 2004. And she really set the tone for our organization. I mean, she she put us on the map. It was a great time uh, for Latinas in uh, South Florida. And what was great about it is because at that time, there were so many Latin pageants, but nobody was crossing over into the American market. And then what we decided to do, we had started a scholarship program. And Nova Southeastern University had actually given us that year uh, almost eighty thousand dollars in scholarship, wow. forty thousand dollars to the Miss, and forty thousand to the teen, so that these women could continue on with their their education. So we did do that for a couple of years, and of course, when the recession hit back in uh, two thousand eight and two thousand nine, the college wasn't able to do that much, but we were still able to get the word out there. And then yes. what had actually happened was we became so popular. And a lot of women were coming to me saying, hey, you know, I love this organization, but I don't have a Hispanic background. How could I get involved? And that's when we decided to do the world organization. And the best person to really kick that off was Jennifer Rosario. Wow. And Jennifer that's became amazing. the first Miss International World. And she took that division to new heights. So she, you know, she does everything else. Yeah. And she's and, she's doing she's doing amazing things. She's acting. You know, she's now she's you know, she has her own show on FNN News to right. um, end it at the um, entertainment buzz. 
yeah. which I was lucky to be on there. So that was I was um, uh, amazing, a great opportunity. But um, we see we see a lot of the the people that's gone through your organization springboard into different things. Yes, and, they have. Uh, which which is cool, which is very cool. Uh, and shout out to Nova, which um, my oldest daughter, Maricela, uh just got accepted in our doctor's program. So she'll be going wow. in over. Congratulations. So shout out to Nova. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. my, my, my baby, my other baby. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, so I wanted to ask you, you, you said that uh, COVID-19 hit you hard. You know, yes, tell us a little bit about that. Um, you shared that story with us earlier, um, if you don't mind. Yes, and I will share it again. COVID-19 did uh, hit me very hard because our Miss International World, Haiti, who is a uh, frontliner, she was a nurse in the ICU unit. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of PPE protection. And she contacted COVID-19. And she was in pretty wow. bad shape. Oh, and wow. on Unfortunately, when she had gone home, she didn't know she had it right away, and the baby got it. She had to be away from her baby for like 21 days. Oh, wow. She's fine now. She's on the road to recovery. She's back working at the hospital. And then Easter Sunday, I did FaceTime with my cousin and found out she had the virus very bad. We almost lost her. Oh, wow. Uh, she was very ill for 21 days. I mean, I... When I looked at her, I mean, she's absolutely stunning. I mean, this is a, an all-American beauty with a blonde hair, blue eyes. And her eyes were actually bulging out of her head. That's how oh. bad this illness actually hits you. Oh, wow. But I'm happy to say that both of these ladies are, you know, on the mend. They're okay now. And that is the reason why I have gotten in the fight with Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line. Yes. To help. I'm working with a lot of different groups scientists. I was on a big call today with my congresswoman, Lois Frankel, and there must have been about seven doctors on there. And I have decided that I'm going to dedicate a lot of my time to help either find a, a cure, a vaccine, or something for this horrible disease. Because right. when I saw pictures, what it does to the inside of the body, it's, it's yeah. not like having a flu or, all right, we know the flu kills, and we know if you get pneumonia, you could be in bad shape. But this just decimates people. Yeah, this I mean, is a yeah. completely different animal. Completely yeah. different animal. Yeah. It, and um, so if people want to to support, and you said it was the Bahamas, what was the name of the cruise line again? Bahama Paradise Cruise Line, which we do Bahamas our Paradise cruise line. every year. They have what's okay. called the Folding at Home Project. Now, what that is, it's kind of twofold. Uh, they are donating a lot of their unused computers because they're not in the office right now to a lot of different medical professions and scientists that want to have more computer time so that they can be a lot more research. And they've opened that up to anybody that wants to donate their computer time. Uh, they've donated, they're the first cruise line that has actually done this. And they've started opening it up in the rest of the industry. I was very proud of that. And what I'm going to do this year is that anybody that takes ads in my program book, we're going to have proceeds go towards that project and also first responders because it's just very important to stay in the fight with this illness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, and so if anybody wants to be involved, like uh, you know, your anybody that's watching our show would like to support the cause, what what can they do to uh participate? Well, they can contact me directly. I am on social media. They can get me under Angela Basilico, uh send me a message, email me at ms intl world at aol.com, and I will certainly tell them how they can get involved with this. Okay, awesome. All right, and um, uh, Anne, did you have any questions for her? I'm sorry to hear about, you know, the COVID and how it, I mean, affected your life. And I, I understand too, you know, I have a, a family friend, you know, my parents were friends with him for the longest time in New York. And he was actually an, a writer, a technology writer for the Associated right. Press. And he passed away a few weeks ago, you know, oh, from COVID-19. Oh. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I feel you, you know, it's like, it exactly. And I had a very good friend of mine that was in uh, New York. Her father was a doctor and he would not give up. He was, uh, you know, more mature gentleman. He would not give up the fight of being in the ICU unit. And we just found out yesterday that he passed away from COVID-19. Wow. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. So sorry yeah. to hear that. Yeah. And, and a lot of these nurses and doctors, we got to give a big shout out to them because they're not giving up the fight. They're staying there. 
and they're yes. contacting this disease because they're right on top of it. Exactly. And it's, you know, it's just an unfortunate thing. I mean, we're starting to open up, you know, the country, we're starting to open up our states. But at this particular point, you just have to be so careful out there because you, you just don't know where this virus is. No, you don't. Right. You don't. Yeah. And, and like said, if we're starting to open up the country again, but because we have not found a cure, we haven't found a vaccine, it doesn't mean that it's gone. You know, people right. still have it. people are carrying it, people are getting affected with it every day, people are dying every day. I mean, we've, I'm sure we've all had people, you know, being affected by this. So exactly. be very, very careful and take precaution, wear masks, yeah. wash your hands, you know, but not to the point that we're paranoid, but know that it's still out there and we have to be. Yes. Yeah, you, you have to know it's out there. I mean, you know, I understand we can't keep the economy closed forever. Right. I get that side of it too, but I think we could have waited just a little bit more. Yeah, I, um, I agree. I agree. I, agree. I, th I think, I mean, um, you know, whatever side of the fence you fall on, you know, I, I don't think we should have opened it. I, I feel like we opened it for political purposes yeah, right yeah, now. Absolutely. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit too early for that. And yeah. I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's, it's safe. And, you know, that's why, you know, Jessica and I, we made the decision. We said we were going to go ahead and close our studio because, you know, yeah. we have to do what's safe. We, we don't feel comfortable holding events. Right. You know what I mean? Whether we're going to make money or not, we don't feel comfortable having people gather in, in an event that we're putting together so yeah. it's better it's better to be safe than sorry we're taking right. this thing serious and right. I, I i suggest everybody at home take take it serious as well Absolutely. angela i had another question for you i want to ask you a question for today what is one of your favorite childhood memories <laughs> oh i think i told you this one okay when i was a kid and you know during the summer vacations kids were selling kool-aid or selling iced tea and I said, you know what? I got to do something different. So I teamed up with a friend of mine. And I said, look, I said, your mother has this clothesline. I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a basket and a pulley. And we're going to do a Swiss sky ride. Now, if anybody knows about uh, Freedom Land in Long Island, they were the first ones to come up with this bucket that you go over the whole park. So I was so intrigued with it. And I said, this might be great. I said, instead of selling, you know, lemonade and Kool-Aid or iced tea, let's give the kids some little adventure. So what we did was we got a pulley, we got this basket, and we made the basket go over the pool. And we, what we did was we put a sign outside of my friend's house and we said, you know, Swiss guy ride, you know, five cents, 10 cents, wow. or whatever you want to one kid out a little on the heavy side. We put them in the basket, and that was the end of the ride. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was my oh, 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 it's crazy. No, Angela, so, you, so you've always been an uh, entrepreneur, you know, from a young age, I guess. <laughs> always, you know, because, and you know the reason why, and I, it, it still hits me, and today in this country, you always saw poverty. And that was right. something I always felt that no one should have to live in poverty. Mm -hmm. yes. And unfortunately, in this country today, you still see a lot of it. And we saw a lot of it even with COVID-19. People were standing online for hours just trying to get food. Yeah. So yes. I always thought if there was a way to bring some joy into someone's life, even making a crazy little ride like that, why not? Right. Uh, you know, uh, it's I always said to myself, it was never about me. And I learned at a very early age, it's always about somebody else. So if yes. you can do something to bring a smile or make somebody happy, why not do it? Whether it's big or whether it's small, just do it. Thank you, Angela. And you always bring a smile to my face every time I, I get to work with you because you are an amazing person. You're such a sweet Thank lady. You. And uh, we, we definitely love you. We love Al, your husband. S send our best to him. I will. And we hope that the both of you stay healthy, stay yeah. safe, and, and stay fierce, okay? Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. You can catch us live every Friday at 6 o'clock. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay fierce.